I've added some error checking code, kind of rearranged some stuff in this function. Uh, so right here, I added some error checking code uh, to help me kind of like understand what's going on. I labeled what I'm doing here. So get reference to the size, the CPU side bitmap, uh, check the rectangle bounds for validity, check the rectangle dirty for validity. So I've moved up the part where I'm getting the uh, pixel width and pixel height. I moved that directly to the top and then I'm doing some simple tests, right? So the rectangle bounds uh, needs to be uh, within zero to pixel width to pixel height. Uh, and this might seem like um, a trivial error check, but it's not. All, this is not just to ch error check the code. It's also to help me understand the logic of the code. Because I was kind of like getting up my frames of reference kind of mixed up and confused. Uh, and so this is going to help me because I'm like, oh yeah, the rectangle bounds is actually a subselection of the uh, pixels. And these pixels, they are actually always at zero, comma zero, no matter what. Um, and that's kind of what trick tripped me up there, because I'm like, well, yeah, of course the pixels that are always zero, comma zero, because it's just a bitmap in memory. But that doesn't mean that this is necessarily constrained to there. And it is actually, but it is actually, but this is actually constrained to that. It can't go below zero, comma zero, because um, it's because this is always a subselection of, uh, of the range over here. Uh, okay, so going down here, the dirty rectangle is uh, same deal. It is a subselection of uh, the main bounding rectangle. So, okay, here's our main region, and this is a this stuff over here is a subselection of this. And then same thing. Let me take this down to here. This right, this right here is the superset of this, right? This this is the subselection of this, and this is the subselection of this. And when I'm saying this, I'm saying these variables and the range at with with well, these variables in the range they contain. When I'm saying that one is a subset of the other, right? So these variables in the range that they contain, well, this these variables in the range they contain. So this is a subset of this, and same deal. This is a subset of this. So we kind of filter down from everything to taking this subset here, and then taking it down here, and taking another subset here. So we're going from here, filtering down to here, and then filtering down to here. That's kind of the order of the data flow is going like this in terms of like how things are being filtered. Um, so yeah, our dirty rectangle, our main bounding rectangle, our selection area that we're working with on the pixel buffer, and then the whole the whole pixel buffer itself. Okay, so with that, uh, some of the calculations kind of make more sense to me now. Um, so we're gonna take the width of our subselection, right? We're gonna just take the highest value minus the lowest value and add one because of the off by one errors, right? Um, because if we go from zero to zero, that's one pixel. And once we have the width, we can plug the width into our index to xy formula uh, using the inputted index uh, here. And we're going to map that index to an xy, xy that is um, on this xy is going to be um, uh, relative to um, to, well, none of these rectangles yet. It's relative to a hypothetical rectangle that's at zero comma zero that has uh, this width. But with, but right now there's no offsets, right? Um, so, so the coordinates here are not correctly translated. They're, they're at zero comma zero of something that doesn't really exist. So we have to add an offset, right? We gotta add the offset of where the origin of this is. So we're going to just take, uh, just add them together, right? Um, so if this is zero, if this is at zero comma zero, then this is five, right? Now, if this is at like, uh, if the origin is at like 10 and th these are both five, right? Then this would be 15 and 15, right? And just add that to get the um, correct coordinate space for the um, I, X, Y uh, bounds, right? And You'll notice that we add an offset here, but we don't add 
an offset uh, to this because the index value never changes. The index is always linear and the dimensions of your data do not affect the index. And that's why we just add zero because it's to say this is no op, this does not change. So now that we take this, we're gonna go down here and we wanna get the pixel coordinates. Well, because this uh, selection area is a subselection of the pixels, we don't need to do any uh, offsets or anything. They're in the same coordinate space. So PX, PY is just equal to this. Uh, there's a minus zero here just to uh, make it kind of clear that we don't need to like do any offsetting, right? Um, so anyways, once we're here, uh, we're gonna do another check uh, and this is just a sanity check to get our bearings, right? So PX and PY should be within the uh, regions of our uh, data. So it should be um, it should be within zero to less than uh, the pixel width and with the Y between zero and less than the pixel height. And if it's not, we're gonna throw PXY is out of bounds and then we're gonna hunt down the air and figure out what's going wrong. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to convert the um, uh, we're going to convert back into an index, um, but this index is why I already said that indexes didn't need any tr any translation or conversion. So why so why am I converting this? Um, so let me think about that for a second, because I'm not sure. Um, so this pixel index, well, the first thought is, well, that's weird. I don't even use it. Um, well, actually, no, 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 I do. OK, yeah, 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 I see, I see. Um, so this pixel index is so that right now the X and Y's are within the cord within the correct uh, coordinate space of the actual buffer, and now we need to get an index uh, because some index values on if we have a subselection over our pixel buffer, then not all indices would be valid indices. They wouldn't all be within um, the selection the subselection area. So we're just getting the we're just getting this back into an index. So that um, so now that we have values, the index or the x, y, and all these are already already converted. So uh, if we need a function that needs to access the data using an x and y, we have that. If we have a function that needs to access the data on the uh, pixel buffer using just a linear index, we have that as well. Um, so let's uh, let's go back and look at the other index value and kind of explore what's. Uh, what's up with these calculations. Um, so the index, um, because we said that this index did not change. And why, is, is that really true or did we make a mistake here? Uh, we don't really use it anywhere, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but it would be good to make sure that this the math is still correct, right? Because uh, we're kind of trying to self-document what is going on here. Um, so the index is hypothetical. Okay, well, if we take a rectangle and we we have this rectangle, right, and we're scanning all, we're doing like, we're scan lining through that rectangle index by index, right, uh, from the top uh, the top left and we're scanning left to right and then top to bottom we're just doing like you know CRT scan lines um, if you move the rectangle that you're scan lining through without changing its shape the indexes uh, the indexes still communicate the same data point uh, right? So if the origin of your data kind of shifts around the index, um, that doesn't change what the index should be, right? It'd be like if you, if you have like a CRT monitor, pretend it's like doing these scan line things, right? And pretend that you could think of the CRT monitor as, as a big rectangle. 
And if you, when you move your TV from the living room to the dining room, it doesn't change the actual index values um, of those of those uh, scan line pixels. But it does change the uh, does but it does change the actual like uh, coordinates of those scan lines, like in global space. Um, okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, I don't know if I did, I didn't really do the best job explaining that, but yeah, I'm fairly certain there's no transformation that needs to be done to these. The only way you would need to, to uh, transform these is if, uh, is if, um, when you're going from one rectangle to another, uh, that rectangle, um, if the rectangle like changed dimensions, right, then the same type of indices wouldn't map to each other, right? Like uh, a long, thin rectangle, the indices are going to map to different x, y's than a than a uh, short, long one. Or you get you get the idea. One one with longer on the x, one longer on the y, right? They're going to map to different indices. Um, but this conceptual rectangle that doesn't really exist because it um, because it's at zero comma zero, and we don't have any rectangle at zero comma zero uh, when we're talking about this. Like this, this rectangle might not be at zero comma zero, but we have this conceptual rectangle at zero comma zero when we do these calculations. Um, and when we move this rectangle, right, we're going to translate it somewhere. That does not change what the index values inside of it are. Um, if that. I don't know if that makes sense, um, but but yeah, that makes. I've convinced myself enough that that makes sense. So even if my explanation is not clear, um, I think we just got to move on. Um, uh, okay. So with that said, I think I kind of further understand this, and I'm a little bit more confident that the that the math is correct because I've gone over this. I've thought about it. I've gone on it, gone over it on video, tried to explain it. So, you know, even if no one watches this video, it's gonna help me kind of like understand that my code is correctly written. Um, Ixy pixels. Oh, this might be wrong. Uh, did we move things around too much? Oh no. Okay, yeah. So this function, right, is the function we we're just looking at. And I just had these notes calculates, which is the, it's a side effect. So the side effect of this function is it's going to calculate this variable and this variable. So I notice that when I click this one, I see this one highlight up. So that's still correct. And we have this in two places. So it's for the getter and the setter. The reason we want to offboard the, um, the logic that finds the x, y's and the indexes of the data is so that our get and even if our get and put functions are written with a bug in it, even if there's a bug in our get and put function, at least they will still get and put the data to the same exact location every time. Like even if even if it's wrong, our calculation of where to put that data, which is inside here. Um, because we use call it here in the put and we call it here in the get, right? Um, it'll still reliably get and put the data to the same place, which kind of helps mitigate problems if we have screwed up. Um, also, you know, code reuse, right? Because now we don't have to maintain two chunks of code for both the get and, you know, the put. Now, I was like, you know, I did have the thought of, well, we could just write the get and put code. We could write the coordinate calculation code inlined, right? We could inline, we could inline this function call here in the putter. And then we could also go down here and we could also inline another version of the of the coordinate calculations here as well. And right, maybe they're like exact copies of each other. Uh, and then you would have like extra redundancy where you could compare them against each other and if they're not completely identical, you know there's a bug in the code. Um, and, and I'm okay with doing things like that, but only if the stuff you're inlining um, isn't so like huge like this. Like this is a lot to inline. So, um, Right, and you know, as a general rule, like in C code, you don't inline things that aren't simple. 
Um, and I'm gonna keep the same kind of rule, like I'm not gonna inline complicated lot. I'm not gonna duplicate overly. Once the logic gets to a certain level of complication, then I'm gonna duplicate it. And also I'm calling it in two places. So it's complicated logic, it's called in two places. It's pretty cut and dry that it should be, uh, that this logic should be extracted into a function. Now, if the logic was very simple and called in two places, uh, then maybe you should not extract it to a function because uh, it destroys some of the linear flow of the code. Um, also, if this logic was only called in one place, like for whatever reason, by design, there was only ever going to be a putter and never a getter for whatever reason, um, then maybe this logic also shouldn't be in a function because it's only called in one place. So just put it back where it's used um, just to keep the linear logic a little bit mo more coherent. Um, but yeah, so that looks like all this logic looks pretty good. Uh, so a quick overview is all we're doing is um, creating something that's going to allow us to map uh, to use a texture as a big pool of uniform values. And the way we're going to use it is um, like with this put function, right? Um, we're going to identify like a location of where we want to store the data on the texture and then the value we want to store there. And then it's like, well, how do we keep track of these like integers that we're just going to pass in here for locations? And for that, what we're going to do is we're going to keep a list of like constants like this, like um, um, uh, we will assign. So I'll have to maybe make a little logical space here. So um, for one instance of that uniform manager, there'll be a group of variables all with the same number. So if we only have, let's say we only have one instance of that uniform manager texture thingy that I showed you down there, uh, then all the variables would start with this. And then they would say, you know, what the actual variable data is all about. Like what's, what's the meaning behind the data? And then the index within the texture that that data is stored. And then what we can do is we can take these exact same tokens and we can put them in our shader code and give them the same constant values so that uh, our shader has a way to look up those values reliably from the texture and we can kind of sync that access. Um, now that's a, that's really complicated. Like this is, uh, this is bordering on being too complicated. Uh, but I also want to keep things simple and always abstract everything as a texture. So I, I think this, um, I think I'm okay with this. It's a little bit overboard. Um, but that's also why uh, before we actually start to implement this, right, we just got it into the code to make sure that it, uh, the code still compiles. But now we're going to set it aside for a little bit so that we can address uh, our like most important uh, uniforms. Uh, these ones are actually going to be uniforms in the actual shader code, no fancy texture manipulation. Um, and we're going to have these five. Uh, we already have this has memory one, but now we want for render mode, editor mode, game time, and then the index of the, our hot swapping rectangles. And we're going to try to make sure that any other uniforms besides these grandfathered in, besides these grandfathered in uniforms, any other uniforms besides these grandfathered in uniforms are going to be somehow packed into a texture. Um, but these uniforms, I think, are necessary to kind of like bootstrap everything and get everything running. Um, and then from there, we can use the more complicated access. Um, so with that, um, the next part of this is I'm just going to start adding these to the shader code, these different uniforms. And I will also add them to our one of our global containers. I'm not sure which one they belong in. I believe probably global classes because they're kind of special objects. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, because they're special objects. They mix, I'm pretty sure they mix um, functions and data. Yeah, and they probably actually go specifically into our graphics adapter. Um, so we'll, we'll see where these go. They basically go wherever this has memory uniform is that we've already made. All these are going to go in the same place. 
Um, we're not going to try to overly categorize it here. Uh, okay, so that's it. Uh, so I'll see you in the next recording.